This El Coyote Coho postcard is from Tyler, who says, Have you seen the animated movie Anomalisa? This is a really great movie. P.S. I love your show. Thank you, Tyler. Yes, I've seen that movie. I have not seen it. Maybe we'll talk about it on a seen it in the future. This postcard from Djibouti oh, is from first. Kevin in the Navy. Gents, greetings from the Horn of Africa. It's hot. Africa hot. Tarzan couldn't take this kind of hot. Biloxi Blues. Ah, okay. Thank you, Kevin. And this is from Sean Henry, this X-rated uh, theater postcard. The Cheerleaders, rated X. Do you have favorite theaters? Alternately, what are some of your more memorable theater-going experiences, uh, irrespective of how good the movie was? Here's to returning back to the movie theater. Sean, I went to, I think it was the Downer Theater in Milwaukee, and I saw the movie straight out of Brooklyn. It was kind of an art house film by a black filmmaker. I believe his name was Matty Rich. It's kind of this black kitchen sink drama. It's about living in the projects. Yeah. It's not very good. And I remember coming out of the theater, you know, you all come out at once, and there's people, in, and someone behind was saying, like, oh, boy, uh, that wasn't a very good movie. And they, I think they said spoon-fed morality or spoon-fed lessons. <clears throat> and I thought, yeah, yeah, he's right. It wasn't very good. And then I went to the Oriental Theater and saw Miller's Crossing. And I came out of that, and I heard someone. It's just this East Side Milwaukee hipster. Like, oh, that movie is not very good. So derivative. <laughs> and I thought, that guy's an idiot. He's totally wrong. And this was a, a time in my life when I really started to critically look at movies and formulate my opinions and also be confident in my opinions where I can I can look at this guy and say, yeah, I agree. And this guy, no, you're totally wrong. Yeah. And so, so mm. that was a really big step in my adulthood. I had really good memories of going to see midnight movies at the Egyptian Theater in Seattle. I saw um, Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory there. And when you live in Seattle and it's the year 2000 and everyone there is like super hipster and you feel like you're the one dork in the entire group, you show up and you see Willy Wonka in the middle of the night and it's filled with people and you realize that all of these hipsters, deep down inside, they're dorks just like you. We all were hoping to be Charlie. When you go to our website, welcome to the basement show.com, there are all kinds of fun things to do there. Watch episodes, and also there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to support our show with a one time or rolling monthly donation. Speaking of rolling donors, here is a list of the, some of their names Kendall, Robert, Amy, Jawaka Records, and Things. John, Tabitha, Jenny, Mark, Ruben, Larissa, Christopher, Jonathan, Andrew, Corey, Matt, Danielle, Paul, Jorge, Stephen, Jerry, Martin from Denmark. Who says, hey, Basement Buds, ever seen Visconti's Death in Venice? The book is fantastic. The movie is an endurance test. It moves at a glacial pace. And Visconti made some dumb changes to the script. Especially the main character's friend spouting clumsy philosophy at Aschenbach. But really at the audience. Craig said about Brokeback Mountain that filming a novella meant that you don't have to cut anything. But I think Death in Venice might be a bad source material. As so much of it is inside the character's head. Even though there are very strong visual elements as well. It's also one of those movies that seems better when you think about it as opposed to watch it. This comment is now way too long. You couldn't possibly read it all on the show. Think again, Martin. The rest of our donors, later. This is from Sean in Anaheim, California. This is from the Amazon. There is no note. This is a record. I don't know what it is. This is from Danny Bell. More Canuck music. Casey and Clayton. <laughs> Are they Canadian? Have you seen this? Did this album come out in 1968, 1975, 1983, or 2020? Nobody knows. Oh, produced by Jeff Tweedy, so that's a clue. But that's also a ringing endorsement. There is no note here from Clayton. This is Pelican, City of Echoes. I think I've heard of Pelican. It's a very impressive looking cover. Oh, there is a track list, but it's in lettering you can't read. <laughs> You have to reflect light off of it to be able to read it. This is I called him Clayton. He's Sean. This is from Sean, not Clayton. That's Clayton. Mustachio. You guys send us questions. This is the part of the show where we answer two of them. 
Adam Fink, if you weren't doing what you are now, what would you want to do for a career? This is a question that has two answers, presupposing different things. The first answer is, what would I do for a career if I was myself as I exist right now? And I consider my career to be acting, comedy, and video editing. So putting all that stuff aside, probably freelance writing, writing novels or, or stories or you know things like that would be the, the most intriguing thing. But I, I could also see myself just writing articles. I think that would be really rewarding just to have an agent where you say, oh, I wrote this thing. Where do you think I should send it? I think that would be a good life. Because one of the things I like about what I do now is the solitude of it and the fact that I just, I do my work in a vacuum and by myself and I have only myself to answer to pretty much. So the second answer to that is what would I do if I wasn't doing what I did right now and I could have the skill set that allows me to do that thing. So it's more of a fantasy answer. And I probably would be a composer. I've always regretted not learning an instrument or getting more into music. And again, with that solitude, just composing a piece of music and then hearing it performed by a symphony or hearing it in a film or on a TV show. I think that would be very rewarding for me. If I could have any job uh, and it would fit in with my lifestyle right now, it would be to work at a museum uh, in some sort of administrative capacity. If I could have my fantasy job, it would be a three camera sitcom director because my favorite times in the theater is when I've been directing things on an extremely tight schedule. Yeah. Tim Lemire writes, Is there a book, short story, or play that has meant so much to you that you wish a truly successful movie adaptation could bring it to a broader audience and fully convey its appeal? I'm going to choose a series of books where they have made an adaptation of it, and it was inadequate. And that is Ursula Le Guin's Wizard of Earthsea series. I read all of those books in the months after Santina was born. And they've made a TV series out of it, which I never want to watch. Because a key thing about the books is that there's very few white people in it. They're supposed to be very brown, almost golden people. There was a series, and they made everyone white. Okay. So I don't want to watch that series. Reminds me of a lion I shot in Tanzania. <laughs> Ferris Webster, the film editor, namesake of two of my favorite 1980s characters. <laughs> I sent my soul through the invisible, some letter of that afterlife to spell, and by and by my soul returned to me, and answered I myself am, am in heaven and hell. And that the one charm of marriage is that it makes a life of deception absolutely necessary to both parties. Particularly if you are the avatar of Oscar Wilde. There's something... I can't quite understand. German. Geometry. But whenever Dorian poses for me... He's nude! And now, Dorian, get up at the platform and don't pay any attention to what Lord Henry says. And don't make yourself nude. Dorian will change stones to just as he is till I'm grown. I'll wait for you. Oi! <laughs> when we're happy, we're always good. When we're good, we're not always happy. Sybil is the answer to all your cynicism, Harry. I think you'll find that when someone is the answer, often they are also the question. It's so easy to be witty like Oscar Wilde. You just have two <laughs> opposite things in a sentence. You must admit that women give men the very gold of their life. But they invariably want it back in such small change. Small change got rained on with his own <laughs> yeah. 38. Listen to this. There once was a man from Nantucket. Foul dreams of sensual life. Who wrote it? Brilliant young Irishman out of Oxford. His name is Oscar Wilde. <laughs> Goodbye, Dorian. I'm looking forward to your party tonight. I'm sure it'll be wonderful. I'm very English, by the way. I, I enjoy being an English person. <laughs> In this room, every moment of his childhood and its stainless purity came back to him. All of the dirty, dirty moments of childhood. The filthy <laughs> thoughts and actions. Blowing your horn. Interfering in the pants area. All of it came back to Dorian in a flash. Laszlo had left the house at 11. No one had seen him come in again. Most of the servants were at celibate. Most of the servants were celibate? What does that have to do with it? Yeah, if you're celibate, what are you going to do after 11? <laughs> going to go to sleep, I guess. Yeah. Oh, but you haven't changed. You'll be late for dinner. 
He's not dressed for dinner in their world. <laughs> what has Gladys to do with it? What's Gladys got to do? Got to do with it? How little we really know of what goes on inside a man. If only there was a painting that could tell me. The painting's age... The, you know, it's a picture of Dorian Gray. Picture, picture is, is his soul. Then they do a whole swap at the end. It's a Freaky Friday. It's basically Freaky Friday. With painting. I receive a lot of records and music in the P.O. Box, and I try and listen to them. I've listened to a CD called Always. It's not spelled that way, but it's pronounced that way. Always. I was told that on the internet. Uh, we listen to this in the car, Tona and myself. This is a group. This is really good music. It's basically, it sounds like Nico Case with echoey guitars. Uh, actually, it's funny that you posted that Dum Dum Girls video. Oh, on our Facebook page, because they kind of sound like them, too. This is music I like. This is the kind of music I like. This is not challenging for me. I'll just put this in and just enjoy it. So, always, with two Vs. I've got an envelope here from Michael Lafferty. It's going to be a DVD cover that he designed. Welcome to the Basement, the complete sixth season, the only season with the Punishment Pole. <laughs> We're wearing our Halloween costumes. You're dressed up like... Kurt Russell. Oh, yeah. From Big Trouble in Little China. I'm the doofus with the frisbee. <laughs> Our ticket to Hawaii. In the sixth season of the hit YouTube series, Matt and Craig set out to watch movies from the Italian job to a close shave. Tragic events leave the basement feeling a lot calder than usual. So they take the old leather couch through the Valley of Guanji, dip their bucket into a swimming pool full of buttons, and salute B-movies as they get their hands on a hard ticket to Hawaii. Along the way, they'll receive a new cat, a new baby, some welcome visits from basement alums, and a mild scolding from John Waters. <laughs> wow, Michael has done his homework. There you go. DVD cover. We have the rest of the donors now. You want to hear them? I'm going to read them. Jared, Jeremy, Graham, Eden, Tiffany, Brandon, The Factory Boys, Malcolm, Charles, William, Vincent, Vance, Derek, Carson, Sarah, Daniel, Krista, Jacob, Maurizio, James, Care Lock Services, Michael, Alec, Xander, Dan, and David. Let's finish up these packages. That one is from Therese. I imagine it has okay. many things from you. This is a very heavy box from Luke in New Orleans, Louisiana. I went there for my 21st birthday. The only place in America, other than maybe Vegas, that doesn't care that you're turning 21 today. <laughs> Nothing special comes your way. Uh-oh. Is it food? It's food. Oh, we can eat food on the show. Yeah. This is a box of stuff from Luke. I haven't found a note yet, but I have found this. It is a 45 single, the Elton John Band. The Elton John Band. Philadelphia Freedom. Oh, it's, El it's Elton John. Yeah. I saw her standing there. The Elton John Band? That's weird. What's that from? The Ultimate Quiz Book of Contemporary Movie Lines. That's cool. Do it. Do it. You're supposed to guess who the actor was saying the lines. Okay. I am du jour de Lioche. Can you spell that? I don't think so. Try it with a D. No, you got me. Do you feel this vehicle is safe for highway travel? Yes, I do. Yes, I really do. Here's a quarter. Go downtown and have a rat gnaw that thing off your face. There's a cat in a box beneath us, if you're hearing a rustling. Excuse me, stewardess. Is there a movie on this flight? I'm feeling that this movie takes place in Chicago for some reason. No, these are all from different movies. Oh, all it's from the same actor. Oh, the same actor. Oh, Chevy Chase? No. Oh, okay. This this one, you'll, you'll get it. I'm a mog. Half man, half dog. I'm my own best friend. John Candy. Oh, we've got another big book in here. This is where all the weight's coming from. Classic movie trivia. Oh. What director lured Audrey Hepburn back to the screen after a nine-year hiatus to star in Robin and Marion? D, Richard Lester. Great. Got it. Okay, I found the letter from Luke. I've been watching your show since Saturday Night Fever and have been a dedicated fan ever since. I've enjoyed seeing the show grow over the years, and it has always been an outlet for my own love of film discussion. Your show has been a constant well for new titles to add to my list or directors to explore and even new musical discoveries. He sent us all these postcards and he's written a different question for us on each one. Whoa. So I think we will add these. Oh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. Faster Pussycat Kill Kill. These are all classic uh, movie posters. 
So I think we're going to take these and add these to our questions list, and we'll answer these on future shows. Okay, so the single, this is a collaboration between Elton John and John Lennon. Oh. I saw her standing there featuring John Lennon. And Philadelphia Freedom. It's not the Philadelphia Freedom, is it? I didn't know John Lennon played on that. Don't know. Okay. Thumb kisses all around. Luke. Thank you, Luke. Let's see what else is in this bag. Bob Dylan revisited 13 graphic interpretations of Bob Dylan's songs. Interesting. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, you're going to want to take that one home and study it. Yes. That was a big box of stuff from Luke. All right. Therese sends us some stuff from Australia. We got food. Dairy milk. Caramello koala. Again, four words I understand, but not in that order. Cheesers, which looks like kind of like onion rings made out of cheese. One for both of us. I think we've had cheesers before. Vegemite and cheese chips. Mmm. Oh, cheesers are so good. Triple cheese toasties. We've had toasties. Stuff for the cats, I think. Feasty Feast appetizers. White meat chicken appetizer in a savory tuna broth. Oh, boy. Look at, they're going to become fancy cats like the fancy cat on the picture here. My cats will never be fancy. Then we have Vegemite dips. I love it. Okay, I don't know why I have all of these on my lap. She predicted what you were going to say. Oh, I hope there's food in here. I hope there's food. <laughs> Enjoy, Basement Dwellers. And Craig, if you're uninitiated in the ways of Vegemite, I don't believe so because I think you sent us some before. There is enough in each sachet for about six serves. The best method is to place a tiny amount of Vegemite on your knife and wave it vaguely in the general direction of your toast. Less is more in Vegemite terms. I'm going to eat this caramel koala. I'm going to eat one too. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Oh, the food. It is actually in koala form. Oh. Oh my god. Mm. We're happy folks here in the basement after opening all of these wonderful packages and spending this time with you. We want to thank you for watching. Watch the new episode of Welcome to the Basement, which comes out this coming Friday. It's going to be some movie. I don't know what it is. Matt might know what it is. I know what it is. See you Friday. <laughs>